demonstrate the next part of our schematic project, which is part three. Yeah! Okay, so this is the signal path tracing. So here I've got the full schematic of 1126. So instead of just looking at the small section we were earlier, I want to look at the whole thing for signal tracing. <clears throat> Hopefully it's not too small to see. Um, there is a print copy you can download and print to follow along if you would like. <clears throat> so we started our input. We're basically just going input to output. And in this case, it's a limiter, a compressor, so we also have a side chain path that we'll do separately. But first, just the signal path, input to output. I'm going to use orange for that. So over here, we have the input marked. And then output is also marked in the same place. See, so output goes all the way over to here. So here's my output. So that's where we're going to end. This is where we're going to start. Now, this is a balanced device. So it has inputs, in this case, that are marked plus, minus, and C. So that's an older style of marking instead of hot and cold. Plus minus would be hot, common, or C would be cold. Um, now, one of the important things for the signal path is that we're not looking at current direction. We're not looking at signal polarity or anything like that. Just how does the signal get through? So in this case, what I would do is just say the signal goes hot and cold into the transformer. That's supposed to be an arrow. If you wanted to draw two different polarities and all that stuff, you could, but all we care about is it's going through this transformer to get in. Um, it's going to go through both paths. This one's direct. This one goes through this resistor T attenuated network. We can investigate that more if we needed to, but for this point, I think it's fine to just say we're going into this side of the transformer, which then comes out this side of the transformer. And on this side of the transformer, the bottom is grounded. We know that because we already did our ground and positive and negative voltages. So then we can say the, the signal is not on ground, so it's going up here. And it goes in to the base of this first transistor, which makes sense. Base is the input. And this is the section we've looked at, so we already know that that's the input to this transistor. The output is on its collector to the next base. I'm putting some arrows. You don't have to. It depends on what makes more sense to you. Again, this is all about giving you more information as you work. This last transistor is a common collector, so we come out the emitter, go to the output gain control. And if you look through that, it goes through the control, the base of the next transistor, and we keep following that through the transistors. And here it's a push-pull, so it goes through, it has two different paths. And then it goes to the transformer. And then bottom of the transformer is grounded. And again, I would just say the secondary transformer is where it comes out. <clears throat> so that's our signal path. Fairly simple. Um, and particularly if you've got all of your sub-circuits done, this should be very simple. You might see it goes in, going some places you weren't sure about, but again, shouldn't be too difficult of a part of the process. But it makes sure that you understand exactly how the signal is flowing. So I'll go ahead and use purple now to do my side chain. In this case, they call side chain gain reduction control amp. <clears throat> so one of the things we see um, is that there is a feed down to this gain reduction control amp that comes from right here. So before the output level control, the signal splits off, comes down, goes through this resistor network, and that's your threshold, or excuse me, that's your ratio control. And into another, Fairly simple amplifier circuit. If you're doing this whole thing, you would have already done sub-circuits for this. 
so you'd understand how it goes. <clears throat> that ends up coming to here. And at that point, it becomes a DC signal, a control voltage, that then goes up to here to our FET. So I would probably change the color if I'm still doing this and say, well, that's that's now not side chain, that has become control voltage. So maybe I change that to yellow and show where that goes. So <clears throat> whether you do all those things or not depends on your circuit and what you're trying to do with it. You might want to do side chain on a different page. I think having multiple pages with different things is really useful here. But that's what we're trying to do. And again, the idea is to have it so that when you look at the schematic, you don't have to trace that signal path every time. It's sitting there right in front of you. Um, positive voltage and ground are there right in front of you, so it's easy to see. So you don't have to keep doing the same process of figuring out where things go. So in the next video, we'll look at tracing the current path for each of the active components.